And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back G2 versus BDS. And a reminder, you just saw it on your screens. Behind the screen, a new episode premiering next week, October 28th, around, well, exactly this time with BDS and taking a look at this squad, this excellent team, the cream of the crop. And nobody does it better here in Europe. Welcome back to the analyst desk. I'm Alex Medic. With me are Fresh and Jess. We're going to have a chat about these two squads. First up, BDS, our number one squad by a country mile that cannot be moved from their spot, and G2 that have had a rough time. First up, BDS, Jess, your thoughts? Well, I mean, BDS has more than doubled the points this stage that G2 has. And well, when you said G2's had a disappointing stage, I think that says it all in a nice little pretty picture with a bow on top, but maybe not for the G2 fans. For the BDS fans out there, however, myself being one, being a huge Rafale fan myself for many a years, they have not been defeated at all this entire stage. They are undefeated, even if they have two overtime wins. That still doesn't mean much to me because they haven't had a single L on their name and G2 has the possibility today to spoil that and come out and just swing because there's nothing that G2 has left to be able to move in either the overall scoreboard for the Pro League finals or for the major finals or anything in between, I think, unless Fresh has some SI points, you know, tingling somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. that they might be oh. able to shift up if they win this. Okay, what's up for G2 then, Fresh? Uh, I mean, not much. Hopefully they'll be glad to get rid of stage three for them. It, it's been a pretty poor stage, let's be honest. They'll they'll be happy to close this book. Of course, the confirmed for EU finals. They're not going yep. to the major, so they'll be able to give themselves a real break. Um, it's interesting for SI. So they're currently sitting in seventh position. Mm -hmm. They can't get fifth because VP winning earlier, which is a bit of a surprise. They can get sixth. And what that means is it gives them, if they get sixth by a regulation win today, it gives them a 50-50 chance to go to SI on points alone. It's still looking unlikely they'll go to a silent point, but a win today would help them. Okay. Okay. So it's not all doom and gloom. They yeah. Do. They've got something to play for, right? Yeah. Imagine an SI without a G2 in it. Ooh. I mean, I mean who knows? We I mean, look, rally for a pity ticket or something like that. Oh, they, they already, like, they already no, 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 got no. one before in 2019, right? Was, oh. uh, we don't no, do those? Yeah, uh, 2020, yeah. 2020, yeah. We don't, we don't do those anymore. Oh. And, you know... If they don't make it to SI, they didn't make it to Worlds. They they also didn't make it to you know to to, to champions in the in the year. So you know it's a, it's a it's a rough year for G two overall. But you know, whatever, Carlos is known for getting over these sorts of things. That's it'll be okay. <laughs> so how about then we take a look at our map as our lobby is ready. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see. Maybe this will have a big impact. We know BDS's mm. oh. map pool depth is incredible, but you know what? Best chance, it's coastline chaos total here for G2. And they start on the defense, the attacking side for BDS. Just your thoughts? My thoughts is that considering BDS is going to the major very soon, to go to one of their most played maps since June the 1st is interesting. I know a lot of those players have been in French League and we think they were going there because they didn't want to show any strats. Okay, there's multiple different possibilities, but this is one of their most played maps by far and one that they do operate pretty well on. So I'm, I'm surprised that they are going to it, but you can do almost anything on Coastline and get away with it. And BDS is one of those teams. So I'm sure they'll do some randomized stuff today. And I think that's what they want, especially you mentioned the French League. They've got the finals coming up literally tomorrow. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to go to a coastline just took every other map away. You know, their national competition is still important to them. They're still against Heroic. They're still against Vitality. They've got mm -hmm. good opposition in the French League. So they'll took away their better maps and they'll just play a coastline against G2. It is G2's favorite map and it is one where they've actually won, I think, a couple of games on it this stage. Yep. So I'm expecting quite a good contest coming out of this. Definitely so. We want to see the best game possible. And if, like you're saying, Fresh, G2 can get three points in regulation time, then 50 50 for SI, right? It's all preparation for it. Well, well, well. G2 BDS, it's coastline. Fresh Jess, thank you so very much. Let's then toss it to our casters. Got Ace and Dez, who literally said when Coastline was revealed, ah, <laughs> uh, darn. And I, I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> so enjoy. 
That was a very good PG effort towards uh, covering what I actually said there, I think, Milosh. So thank you very much for saving my bacon on that front. But, Ace, it's going to be a Coastline game. Now, before we all go mad, me in particular, after that meme yesterday about Coastline and staying as far away from people who like this map as possible, it has been good the last couple of times we've seen it. We had a banger earlier in the stage. We saw a brilliant game between SSG and Furia at the last major. So I'm hoping this is going to be the third in a row where the train continues and we kind of move Coastline away from our shit list, right? Well, like you said, Des, I mean, we've had some absolute humdingers on Coastline over the last couple of months, especially here in EUL. So I think this one holds up a lot of premise. G2, BDS, an old classic. These two teams are going to go at each other. We know that. G2, I am sure, would love to spoil BDS's party. Look up in the top left corner of your screen. Last play days. Win, 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 win for BDS. There's another few that you can stick on there as well. They are currently eight games unbeaten inside of stage three. They haven't won one of the stages yet. They didn't win stage one. They didn't win stage two. They got to the major each time, but they didn't top the table. This time, they have topped the table, but can they be the first to do it unbeaten all nine games it's G2's opportunity to spoil that party it is it is I mean are they the team to do it are the kind of team that can stack up against BDS in gun skill and do it on a map like Coastline I don't want to be that guy, but the answer's a firm no. It's not really the kind of play. I don't expect them to be the team that can do it, that can really kind of rival them on a good day when it comes around to the gun skill side of things. Citizen, sure, but across the rest of the team at points, we've seen inconsistencies, which I think is what worries me. However, we'll leave all the talk until the game has actually got underway and we see how the first few rounds play out. BDS start on the attack, a spicy battle or two in the mix, the Jaeger, the key one that I'm looking at there. We saw the Jaeger and won my ban earlier on today, which meant that was a grenade-filled match. Here, maybe a little less so, but you still got that Wamai coming in, who, of course, recently had the, I guess everyone wants to call it a buff, got more magnets, but the range is reduced from five meters down to 3.5. So a small nerf to the radius, but still more of those to use does mean more grenades that can be caught, especially on tight maps like Coastline. It does. G2 going to be starting us off on the defence. We've got the sixth pick from Hungary going from Kaid over to the Echo there. So... G2, they're going to have to do something here, Des. We know that the attackers, you know, they don't have the run of things. It's not quite cafe, but still, the attackers will usually find some success on course line. So G2, for me, they, if they want to win here, I think they need to try and tie this up like 3-3 at the half. I think 4-2 to BDS is not the end of the world, but I can see BDS locking it down on defence from there. I think they really need to split this one evenly to G2. Yeah, that'd be at least the at least the benchmark you're aiming for, but it feels like that more might be the sky's the limit kind of feel to it. We'll see how it plays out and how the rounds begin to develop. One thing I am enjoying about this map, and I think I said it to, I want to say it was Corey. I can't remember if it was Corey, but I said the map, in fact, I think it was Fox said it. The map feels a lot better now, I think, especially because of VIP and the smaller windows that you can play around from the roof, for example. It just gives another place that the defenders can play and stops every single defense feeling like you need to sit in the same positions all the time time a lot of defenders enjoy roaming off around penthouse theater and in towards vip and i think that double reinforceable wall now really does help with that fact to make it quite spicy kayak almost losing his life taking three or four shots on his pushback up towards cool vibes not the best start and with no thunderbird on side no top up available as you say, Kayak, not getting himself off to the perfect start in the round. Could be picked up very, very easily by BDS, who are starting to apply a little bit of pressure. Rafal has got himself onto the double window. He's going to hold a tight angle just inside of sight there. Actually takes the opportunity to dip back out of sight and just use that twitch drone. He spots out the feet, gives the little yellow ping. They know that the man is playing in the back of Aquarium. And he's going to be pushed from the door. Now, can Lems win this fight? He's going to have a yellow ping information, but... Not sure that he's going to push it immediately. He's got all the information he needs. He knows that the man is crouched. He knows exactly where he is, but it is still a very difficult fight to win. I think he's just waiting for some support, some pressure from elsewhere. No, he goes in a war shot from Elems. Just manages to pre-fire Kayak with a headshot. Doesn't matter how many HP he had or not. He was dying as soon as that bullet left the gun from Elems. It was an absolute beauty of a pre-fire, Des. Ah, uh, yellow pings. You gotta love to hate him if you're some people. In other cases, maybe you 
looked up a little bit. Rafal just seeing a snag of a player appearing. Let's not forget Ranchero is likely in his favourite position on this attack as well. He will be holding up on the hookah window along with Bride, who sat just outside, ready to come running in. In fact, a small change. He said he's playing on the double window here, so a small bit of difference, but nothing that you'll lose too much sleep over. In fact, to Malaya, I think it was just a cam that had me debated there. You can see him up on the hookah window here with a long angle cut. It's the same attack every single time from BDS. We're very used to seeing it by now, but they still got all the control they need. Default plant spot available. Citizen holding on the downstairs. Doesn't have a C4, but can do some damage. A lens into a 3k in the round. BDS looking to an explosive start, yet to lose a member as they find the fourth. And as we said, you just don't see a team that can rival BDS in Europe right now for gun skill. Citizen, the last one left alive, but Shaiko has the final word in their age-old rivalry. A flawless round to start for BDS. Well, it was the Elems and Shaiko Shaw. Elems, he started things off. It was just a bit of a relay race, really. He came in with a 3K and then passed the baton on to Shaiko, who finished things off with that final sprint and got himself a two-piece in the round as well. What a performance from BDS to start us off there. That's going to have G2 absolutely reeling. And I'm a bit concerned for G2 inside of this game, Des. I didn't want to say it before we started off, but G2 have had a tough stage. That's the reality. You know, we've got to call it as we see it. And coming into a final match against BDS, you can understand G2 have nothing to play for now. They've, they're locked into fourth. They've got the Reuel final spot. Um, I don't believe that Vitality can come through and take that. They can tie them up on points, but I think G2 have got the head-to-head. -head. I will stand corrected, but I think that's right. Um, I think it's their head-to-head together. -head yeah, so I, th I think that's right last time I looked at it. Um, so G2 have, have nothing really to play for at this point. They've been beaten up um, inside of stage three. There's problems within the team, I think, you know, in terms of performances. We've seen that. We know that. There's things that need to be fixed. Um, you know, so I can sort to see them thinking not actively thinking but just it just being like one of those games that's just like right let's get the season finished like it's not been the best let's get it done you know we need to move on everybody wants to finish with a win I'm sure they'd love to stop BDS going unbeaten but with the way that BDS have been playing and with the impact that G2's performances must have had on mentality, you know, you just look at this and think there's every opportunity for this to just be an absolute steamroller for BDS Absolutely. I mean, one round is never really much to go on. And I'll always say, usually, you know, give a team a team two or three rounds and you might see them warm into things. You know, we've seen teams down zero and four have a timeout and suddenly the game swings back viciously. Oh, I hope way. we do. I hope we yeah. do. We, we see those games. But again, it's... <laughs> It's BDS. <laughs> We're not just talking about any team here. We are talking about the team that I would you know, easily qualify now as leagues ahead of anyone else in the European competition. And it's starting to shape up into that this stage. A run out from Kayak will give them some success. Rafael losing his life. A good bit of disruptive play to start things off for G2. There we go. Great start. That's what we're looking for for G2. Get yourselves into the game. We want them to get a couple of rounds here because then BDS know that the competition is on. The last thing we want to see for this final matchup is a stomp. I want to see BDS really tested here. If they're going to go unbeaten, Des, I want them to earn it. That much is for sure. I don't want it being handed to them on a silver platter here in the final game. So the more aggressive that G2 can get, get those kills and really make BDS earn it. Let's all have something to enjoy in this final matchup now. Shaiko, he's going to be on the drones just looking to check and see exactly what's going on with sin g2 going to lengths to hold on to vip previously they're not playing with a man inside of there at the moment but they bring out a lot of trickery mm. with the electrification particularly kayak on the kaid he's got all sorts of different positions angles and tricks to keep those electric cores in place Shield taken out by Shoko, looking in towards Penthouse, which should open this up a little bit more. I think more for security than anything else. He knew no, no one was going to be sitting behind that as the grenades come singing through, but couldn't hurt to have it. BDS currently sat all spread out throughout Hall of Fame in towards VIP and bathrooms. So very much this heavy north side push coming through. So for G2, it's a case of just holding firm here. They've still got that 90 shield set up, I believe. You've got to be careful about anyone who might try and come into flank on an alternative angle. The swing coming in. Shoko hoping to find something, but... Well, my not quite where he was looking for in the first instance. They dug in, they've got themselves comfortable. So BDS need to be the ones to adapt. Citizen just looking to find the long angle from luggage there unsuccessfully. Shaiko now very aware of the potential position there. Going to be watching the flank, no doubt. Citizen already a little bit ahead of the game, though. While Shaiko was still checking in luggage, he was looking to move through Aquarium and Billiards. Now, Lem's pushing in. 
He's aware of Kayak's presence, but he could be on the losing end of a gunfight here. Kayak, no, no, he sees the legs and he gets the man. Great play from Alems there on War Health. That could have been asking for trouble. Breeder's got himself inside a sight as he's putting that diffuser down. It's 4 versus 2 all of a sudden, and it's falling oh. apart for G2 as BDS. They've just been able to come in with a near perfect execute, get the diffuser down, get the kills at the same wow. time, and Shiro closes down Citizen. And that is picture perfect from BDS. Basically world class, right? You're in a four versus five. You make the tiniest move on the downstairs to remove the C4. At the same time, you've got crossfire set up in towards 90. As soon as that plant comes down, you know you're going to have players start moving. The crossfires are held. They find every single kill without losing a single person more in that round. So even in a man down situation of four versus five, they still finish the round with all four left alive. It is like SWAT levels of efficiency here. It is terrifying to see. And for G2, even though that early disruption came out, they had the C4 ready from below. Nothing could have prepared them for what would look like an incredible execute coming out of BDS. Going to be going down to Kitchen for round number three. G2 choosing to move on, regardless of the fact that they haven't won either of the first two sites. They're going to mix it up and keep changing it around, see if they can get any joy elsewhere. Down in the bottom of the map this time, they're going to have to still hold on to the top floor. We've got the sledge being brought along by Renshiro. We've got the Book of Elems, so they can absolutely destroy this upper level of coastline to get all the vertical angles they could need down into Kitchen and Serve. So G2 got to be aware of that and they're going to have to play some men up there. But the big problem for them is they're going to have to win gunfights and that is what they've been struggling to do so far. They have indeed. Now, I always love the way this site is starting to be played more and more now. So before, you could plant just inside the service door. So no one ever really played inside a lobby or security. It wasn't a thing. Whereas now you can't plant in that area. You have to actually push inside of service itself, which means more and more defensive teams are doing exactly what G2 have done here, opening up that triple wall that's soft, giving yourself the long angles and playing into it from security. Now, you might just say, well, just push security and clear the guy out. Yeah, sure, that's all well and good. But in this case, like here, there's shields, there's laser gates. And to make sure they can't just charging through lobby there is normally a second or sometimes even a third man playing around lobby to make sure you can support the player that is trying to hold those longer angles so it forces bds to have to clear not just the site itself or just get vertical control they've also got to worry about the lateral clear on the ground floor as well i think it's a really interesting defense and one that i love seeing being brought out every single time these Jokar drones are going to need a service after this one. There's putting in some serious miles, getting around the map and just feeding information in. Hungry, even dipping them in and outside, just using those few seconds that he gets of opportunity to try and spot where the BDS players are setting themselves up and just try and get any sort of idea as to where the final push might end up coming from. For the time being, BDS is still on the top floor clearance. They're going to clear out a Vulcan shield. That's going to be some of Virtue's utility moved along. Going to give access into VIP and as I suggested they start working on those vertical angles now then and Shiro gets himself a view onto a shield down in Kitchen, but it is not one of the Vulcan shields so he's not oh, able swing. to oh. take it down it's going to be a normal deployable shield you know I really need to start watching Iana's icon for her gadget to know whether or not it's the real one pushing down <laughs> I, honestly I thought... do it so many times there's a man no don't me. run in I need to just not comment and just watch in future thing. Look at the icon before saying anything. Because I thought Shiko was going to do a Shiko thing and just swing and kill two or three people. But no, Snades are up on high. We know how much he loved discovering those the first time he played Iana and got the chance to run that over, say, an Ash as he used to often like playing in most instances. It changed things up for him in terms of his play style ever so slightly. Kayak's the one holding off here up towards 90. Well, not really looking down towards 90. Playing around bars, sorry. A little bit of pressure coming in, but not yet forced away. And the members of BDS wanting to force him out. There's 45 seconds on the clock. And surely you start thinking, okay, boys, time for that pressure to start building up now because you're starting to run that clock down. And G2 still have tons of map control. Kayak just moving on the flank there, but I think the drone did spot him. Shaiko was very aware of the potential for the challenge coming in from there, and it's ultimately going to be Renshiro to shut down the man from luggage, just sends him packing and gets the opening kill for BDS Virtue. Steps around the corner, puts the vector to use, managing to get the kill onto Renshiro in a late trade. 18 seconds left to go, and this one is on a knife edge, but you just feel that the advantage is with G2 at the minute because the clock is going to play into their favour. Four versus three, Yokai drone shot out. There's an opportunity 
opportunity here for them to get in and get the diffuser down. That's exactly what Breed here does. It's four versus two dead. Somehow BDS, they're finding oh the answers God. once again. There are no questions that G2 can find that BDS do not have a response for. And that is going to be another round closed out. An execution inside of 10 seconds. There's BDS are just absolutely flying on course line right now. It's mortifying, isn't it? Like, to be at 30 seconds, have control of top floor, but no control of lobby, no one clearing out security, no one sunrise side, no one pushing in on kitchen window. You look at that and just think, oh, this is, this is done. They, they can't get away with this. It's absolutely fine. Like, there's no way they fight back and G2 can win around. And then in the last 10 seconds, it just all comes together like clockwork. I know I keep on saying it, but the preparation of this BDS side for executes is terrifying. It is so hard for G2 to find a response, but my God, are they trying? I repeat what we saw in round two, Penthouse and Theatre coming up next. It feels a bit like Breeders come in saying, right, guys, um, stage three, I'm behind in the planting stats. Um, I need to be getting that diffuser down. How many I need to be get? getting that diffuser down every round. As it is, he would have had to have planned successfully in every single attacking round to catch up with Prano. So unfortunately, Breeder, you can take your foot off the gas. You can't make the top spot in stage three. <laughs> Unfortunate for him, but enough that it's still getting them into a commanding position, at least in this round. Or this round, this game, sorry. So even though they might not be top stats, you can still always look back to just how convincing their game has been. Of course, less opportunity if your games are absolutely flying by at the speed of thunder here, because that's how a lot of their games have gone. They have been a lot quicker than the average of what they may have been for other teams. Let's see how Penthouse Theatre shapes up then. Imagine again, you'll see Kite with that electrification on towards the VIP wall. Last time for BDS, it was this big focus up towards the north side. They got themselves the Hall of Fame control, spread across in towards the drop, but then got themselves into VIP, got the cross angles ready and pushed in with that final 30 second or so sprint ready to go. So is it going to be another, you know, not so much slow, but I'm going to say it. Slow start from BDS that then escalates massively into an accelerated execute that comes out and is, oh my God, no, perfect. No, it's Just not. Like, I mean, this one, yeah, Kayak's getting himself caught out early on. Again, not a dream start. It is what it is. <laughs> I mean, we've seen that a few times from Kayak now. He's he's getting in there. He's trying to be unpredictable. He's trying to get things going for G2. As I said, coming into it, you look at this for G2 and you just think it's an opportunity for them to think, you know what, take the chance. You know, or if we fancy a peak, let's have a peak. You know, it, it really doesn't matter too much to them, I don't think. Um, so they, they're willing to okay. take those risks at the beginning of the round, but Virtue taking a risk there and Shaiko just absolutely deleting him from behind the plant pot there. Beautiful kill, Renshiro manages to find Jonka and it's all falling apart. You said that they've been slow, Des. They've come out and within a minute, they are five versus two. They're just playing around here. Oh, do you want to do this round in first gear, guys, or in fifth? Ah, last round was in fifth. We'll take it nice and slow. This one, straight into first gear, razzing it down the motorway and saying, right, we're going all the way to hell with this one. My God, are they really making it feel like hell for G2? A small observation, by the way, Shaiko does have a few rounds where he basically loses both of his drones really early in the round. And I'm thinking that is down to him just being the aggressive entry and giving them um, intel to feed back and forth, not stressing about losing two drones because then he gets to start using his frags, get his gun up, so on and so forth, and they really start to turn things into a higher gear. All that said, a kill come back in for two members of G2. They do start to bounce things back in ever so slowly. Citizen and Hungry getting their names on the kill feed and on the scoreboard for the first time this game. That's it, they're certainly involved in the Good game time. now, but Rafal is well ready for that run out. Hungry getting absolutely decimated as he comes out of the main door. Breeder once again in and getting a plant down. Ranchiro takes damage, but it is not enough as he manages to find the kill onto Citizen. 4 0 BDS, and surely we couldn't finish out an unbeaten streak, Des, with an unbeaten game without G2 picking up a single round. I think just look, again, it's one of those that I look at and just think you cannot give BDS an inch because look at that gunfight at the very end there as well that Ranchero was in, I think it was. It was in a spot where he got fired at, took a bullet or two and lost a bit of health. And then his immediate response when he kind of gave it a second to breathe, step back in, one bullet, kill. End of story. You don't get second chances. You need to land those first few shots. And again, looking up and down the kill feed right now, well, scoreboard, sorry, four kills across four rounds for G2. This has been brutal, is the only way I can describe it. It certainly has so far. It's not looking pretty for G2. And as I said, there's this just smacks of a G2 team that has got a broken spirit, if I'm honest. it's It's been a tough stage. It's the final game. There's nothing resting on it. And you're coming up against the best in the league, one of the best in the world. 
and they are just absolutely running over G2 right now. As I say, they're quite happy to come out and take chances. Kayak taking a few early peaks, looking to maybe have a run out, just try and get anything going for G2, but it just doesn't look like it's going to be the case today. I'm not sure if it will end a 7-0 or not. Right now, I wouldn't put any money against it because BDS are looking great. On the attack, I can't see this being anything other than a continuation. Can G2 turn it round at the half, get themselves on attack and find some rounds? Possibly. But G2 really haven't been at their strongest on attack so far. No, absolutely not, no. It's a uh, well, defence, I guess you mean when you say that, right? No, I mean, on attack over the overall oh, the stage. Season. Sorry, yes. Yeah, sorry, sorry. you know, do I look at G2 and think, no, they'll come in on the I attack think and do well? I think I'm a bit worried when they come in on the attack, usually. Yeah, uh, it's, it's one of those, again, where it's a attack or defense at this point. It's looking a little bit shaky, but a number of teams are ready for the off-season at this point, understandably. C4 recorded in the nick of time, by the way, before a bunch of bullets came through and would have put that to a bitter end. Shaiko, the one doing the work there. Renshiro, I imagine, once again, you'll see him squared up on the hookah window. We see it all the time where I'll try and play his angle out. They've got to deal with someone downstairs, though. So a, a small speed bump put before BDS here, but nothing that's going to trip them over. That much you can guarantee. Renshiro just pressuring in from the pool entrance there. Just looking to put a few shots in towards the defenders that he knows are inside of Sunrise. Uh, just trying to defend on the vertical for the time being. Again, they have got... A little bit of vertical denial on side. Kayak with the nitro in hand. So there is a little bit of potential. Also, those impact nades as well. Of course, Citizen would be able to open up vertical angles from beneath. So something that BDS need to be aware of if they're thinking about going in there and getting that diffuser down, which has certainly been the focus of this team so far. Breeder really seeming to get a few of those added on now. G2 just not there to defend that mirror window whatsoever. They're going to lose one, Des. The Twitch drones do get taken out, so that will leave the other mirror window safe. But already, the defence is starting to be picked apart. It's getting to that point, sure. But I'm also looking at the drones on the side of BDS. You know, down to just a few still out on the field. One in back pocket for Shaiko. A bit uncharacteristic, as to say that it gets deployed out and rolled out into the field. They've got time to play with is the most important part. And I, I just feel you can't count them out until the clock literally hits zero or until they're all dead. The rounds that we've had where there's been 30 seconds left, 10 seconds left, and it looks like there's no way they can possibly win, they somehow make it happen. Now, Yonka's in a rough spot. They know where he is. He's got one bullet away from death. Oh, my God, no way he's going to fight that. But how does he not get the kill? What is that? That's unbelievable. The man just tanked a face full of bullets and walked away the winner. Now, still, no kills coming back for G2. Yonka's down. And Citizen, once again, finds himself in a one versus five. It is not a dream situation that any player wishes to be in. And it's yet another flawless round coming out for BDS, despite things starting to look a little bit shaky as that round went on. A flawless round that could potentially lead to a flawless game. Right now, BDS absolutely flying 5-0. It's, it's, it's not even, it's, it's just cruise control, isn't it? That You know, that's the reality of what BDS are doing right now. They've just flipped on cruise, cruise control and they are just sat in the third lane, just sailing along, absolutely no problems, you know, no care in the world right now for BDS. They are setting themselves up perfectly for their national finals this weekend. They're going to be going in there on a very strong win if this continues. There's going to be a final opportunity for G2 here in round six to get themselves a defence. But I don't know, Des, it, it just looks to me like G2, they just all seem to be doing their own thing a little bit. Um, you know, the, there'll be sort of one takes a bit of a run out. You've got Citizen on the roam who's not always getting engaged until later in the round. I know, you know, he's finding himself in a lot of 1vx situations and... I, I don't know, they just seem to be playing uh, sort of a bit, uh, a bit of an individual style sometimes. It's going through the motions, essentially, right? They know kind of on paper, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I'm holding this area, I'm doing that thing at this certain time, and they're just doing that. And look, in a way, I kind of get it right. Like This is the last game of the stage. It means nothing to you realistically. You can really make a go of it, but I imagine in their mind, they already know that there is tons for this team to work on in the off stage, and nothing they can do right now is going to fix it and potentially give them a win against BDS. So run around and have a bit of fun. There's... As fun as it is being like four kills across five rounds and 25 deaths collectively, like however you want to paint it is up to you. Um, but for them, it's definitely one of the games that I look at and just think there's no way there was prep done for this. I mean, the Nitro, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. Maybe you catch somebody out, but Nitro out of the door, you know, in an attempt to get a, it's essentially a spawn peak. Three. You know, it, it just sort of says everything really. Shaco manages I mean, to get himself two with nades. This is, this is ludicrous. Citizen and Jonka down. You know, how do you, at the same time, 
you know, I've, I've, I've sort of ribbed on G2 a bit there. And, you know, I've, I've said that the performance hasn't been the best. But how do you play against that as well? I mean, as you were saying that, I just checked out what's happened. Jess is going absolutely mental as to why they've got someone sat behind a shield when there's no Wamai on side. I was going to mention it. It's the first round. We haven't seen them bring a Wamai. They brought it in every other one. And two grenades come in from Shaiko. My God, what a shock horror, right? They've yep. just completely ruined them in this round as well. It is rolling over to be a sprint to the finish line. Another flawless round. Three in one game. And D2 still yet to get a buzz ball kill. This is just, I don't know. I just, I don't know what to say anymore, Ace. It hurts. There's no, I mean, there's nothing to say, you know, realistically. No. Um, unfortunately, this is, it feels like G2's stage sort of distilled into a performance. Do you know, it's it, it's, it's been tough for them and it's this not is, getting... This, this is what Pengu gets abating us all, by the way. <laughs> Did you see his tweet earlier? He tweeted out like, don't worry, guys, G2's going to go out with a bang and a dub. We're running it down one more time with a picture of him in his G2 jersey. And I was like, don't bait people. Come on. All he's done is bait his team into being absolutely ruined by the looks of it. It's unfortunate. It certainly is. We're going to be uh, heading into this match point as soon as we can do. It's 6-0. We are just picking sides. We're going to get to G2 on the attack now. Um, I'm not sure how big a difference this is going to make, Des. I don't think this is going to have a big impact on the outcome of the game, if I'm honest. Um, do I look at BDS and think they can lock down this hooker and billiard site? Yes, I do. I would absolutely expect them to do, so I'd be surprised if they didn't, to be honest with you, um, the way that they've played so far. It's not just about the fact um, you know, that uh, G2 have, have not really been playing cohesively and Ultimately, BDS have been winning gunfights as well. They've been going in there. They've been getting some some nice long angle challenges. They've taken opportunities put in front of them. You know, I'm not going to say that they've had to play amazing to to get to six zero because they haven't. But at the same time, they've certainly taken no prisoners. Then they've they've punished every mistake in front of them. <sighs> All right, Ace, let's play a little bit of game of uh, fortune telling and predict in the future, shall we? Now, 7 0. Yes, 7 0. It, it, I think it's 7 exactly. 0. <laughs> yeah, you know exactly <laughs> where I'm going with this one. It looks to be shaping out where this game is full of sevens, zeros, and a hell of a lot of fours if you're Shaiko, but it's looking to be a decisive victory for sure. G2 got to find something on the attacking side, but you'll forgive me if I am pessimistic about the possibility of even a single round going their way. Now, one thing they have done for a little bit of fun is bring along eight frag grenades because why the bloody hell not you still got the one to deal with here they've got nothing else really to burn through it so okay i guess Renshiro could be quite pivotal in this one we'll see if any frag grenade kills can come through but truthfully i'm not really expecting all that many no um i'd agree with you i think because they'll uh... get killed ace that's my reference <laughs> I think you get, if BDS get a couple of opening frags again here, it's, you know, your race is run at that point, regardless of what you've brought along with your virtue. He's going to spray down with the spear, um, just through the soft wall there, not going to connect with anybody. Out comes the first of those frag grenades, takes a ton of damage off of Rafal, but he's just going to dip away. He's going to play on the corner station. So, yep, they might take a bit of damage from nades, but they're just going to bounce around those salvation stations and find themselves the extra hit points. But Shaiko, he's the one with the explosive kill there. You can bring all the nades you want. One nitro from that man, and you've lost somebody already. Okie dokie. I mean, no real big surprises there. Let's all act shocked quick. <gasps> How did they lose a man like that? It's one of those that you look at and you knew it was coming, and it still feels disappointing when it all rolls out. Let's see then if anything else can be done, but as it sits up right now, it's still only four kills across an entire game for the side of G2. It has not been a performance worth remembering, needless to say. Again, it is the last game of the season. You'll take that one. I guess the painful part is there was still something in this really for the finals for G2 when you look at how points can shape up based on, you know, standing overall, but that's no luck you're missing out on now. One minute left to go. G2, they're going to have to find something, Des. They've not managed to find a kill as of yet inside of this round. It is nade after nade after nade after nade after nade after nade. Just raining in from distance, but it is unlikely to get the job done for them. Citizen, he's got a little bit of yellow ping information there. Alems is looking to approach the door. Probably loses his life here. Yes, he does. Citizen managing to find the kill on the tight angle. There we go. That could be the trigger for G2 to really get themselves firing. I'm not convinced as of yet. I'm going to need to see a little bit more. More virtue has been in that position for the majority of the round, just looking to spray through the soft wall, but had absolutely no joy whatsoever. 25 seconds left to go. And BDS, they just look like they are set, ready to just hold their angles, Des, and let GTU do the work. Quite possibly a grenade coming through. 
that's pretty much all of them burnt through. They've got none left, and they've only found the one. A one for one of that is not the dream. C4 onto Yonka. The closeout could be here, and right now, the swing coming in. Virtue shut out, but Citizen finds one pushing up the stairs. Will find himself another a 3k in the round before being shut down by his nemesis. Hungry steps up and will find one off the back of Citizen finding a 3k in the round, and Kayak knows that's maybe as many rounds as they'll get in this entire game, so it's well worth celebrating. Well, I'd like to say I'm going to eat my words, Des, but, you know, no, I no. suppose in terms of scoreline, I will. But, um, you know, I don't think that one round turns around G2's performance um, as of yet. If we see them run it all the way back in and get another six and we go to overtime, then, you know, yeah, maybe we'll we'll start talking differently. But, uh, you know, they've, they've come in there, Citizen with an aggressive push up the cool vibe stairs, gets away with a couple of kills. Um, it was, you know, a good, uh, good initiative taken there. Managed to get in and do something for the team, really fire them up a bit in the round, it seems and hungry able to close it out but I still just I, I, I don't think it's going to be long until BDS finish this off no I feel very much the same sort of vibe about it as well it's again one of those rounds you look at and go okay Citizen found a 3k he came marching up blue and caught a couple of members by surprise nice to get but nothing that really suggests towards uh, the fortunes improving for the side of G2 stat padding we tend to call it at this point Ace yeah basically just get in there, get whatever kills you can before the game is over because, you know, it's it's looking like it's going that way. But as I always say, Des, as I always say, I would love to be surprised by G2 right now. I'd love to see them take six attacks in a row and just keep this train rolling. Give us something to shout about. Give us something to get excited about on this final EUL play day. You know, let's really just mix it up and make BDS earn that unbeaten streak. As it stands, they've got a lot of work to do that. But, you know, I'm rooting for them. I'm right behind them here. Let's have it. Let's see it. Let's come in and start taking rounds. That's what the dream is, but look, we can gas them up all we like. We know that this game is going one way. We keep on saying it. But it's the vibe I'm doing my best, yeah. Des. I'm doing my look, best. The thing is, Ace, what, I know that you're having like a massive internal struggle right now. I'm happy. I'm so happy to sit here and call a spade a spade. G2 are playing awfully. Slash BDS are just playing absolutely lights out some of the best that we've seen them play so far even in rounds when it looks lost they've done wonders so you've got a team at either end of the spectrum but you're always such a positive man of person I try my best. The stage that it hurts me inside sometimes when g2 play behind a shield without a whammy and get naded by shaiko des i will Twice. say that's a nice nade from shaiko <laughs> i do my best don't worry buddy i got you I'll bring some tissues to Sweden. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it. We will get through this game together. We'll make it. Don't worry. Hopefully it turns into being the last round. Otherwise, it feels like BDS are just toying with their food at this point. But let's talk a little around what's going on. It's a Lems holding off on the Vigil off towards himself, off towards the side. Very easy to see in this sort of thing. Looking to waste a bit of time around Penthouse and Theatre. Not able to find any kills, but knows that even he, in a 6-1 position on a 9-2 scoreline, doesn't want to find himself in hot water. And smartly so, backs away down towards Lobby and will keep G2 guessing. Yep, the on that vigil. Just going to be... Ooh, I'm not sure now. I saw it, but I have the uh, the advantage silhouettes there, so I know exactly where Alems was moving. Hungry did get ever so slight a glam glimpse of the uh, the backside of vigil as he moved through into kitchen, so they may well have known his location, but G2 weren't in a position to challenge quick enough, and that's going to allow Alems to get back onto side. And that's not a criticism of G2. They just weren't in a position to get there quickly enough, even if they did spot him. But Virtue, he's going to go back to the same angle that he played last time around just underneath the default camera looking to spray, spray through the soft wall he's just covering Jonka who is covering white stairs all seem to be covering each other in a different angle at the minute but not making too much progress forward but Jonka certainly aware that there's a vigil out there and he's going to have to take the opportunity to come back to site at some point all right, four nades on side, G2. You can find an A kill with this somewhere. Of that, I'm confident. BDS haven't moved all that much from where they were in the previous round, so take a bit of knowledge, adapt on the fly, chuck a nade there, and hopefully you'll find something. The swing coming in, Shaiko with a nice kill onto Kayak outside Hooker. It's an opener, but can G2 fight their way back through? Will they get hit hard on the flanks by Citizen once again? Well, they managed to last time around. Uh, you know, they were able to fight back. Shaco got exactly the same opening kill onto Kayak, who has had a tough day in terms of the entry. That much is for sure. One and eight so far on the day. Sorry to call it out, Kayak, but it has not been a good one. Three versus five as Shaco finds Jonka. Rafal finds Virtue, and you just feel like they've hit that slippery slope. There's, they're standing on ice, and they just can't stop themselves sliding forward. The flank does not work from Citizen this time. G2 trying the same, and they get shut down. 
and BDS able to close it out. And that is going to be stage three closed out. Unbeaten for the French side inside of EUL. Congratulations, BDS. Now we've said it a number of times, but you know, how many times could we be excited about BDS going into a major or some other event and be saying, oh, they could definitely go on and win this one. It's felt like a while since we've been buzzing with that level of confidence. Always the stage, never the spotlight has been the saying around them. But going into Sweden, I am incredibly excited to see what this French team can do. Seven normal regulation wins, two in overtime, but still seven wins no matter which way you want to paint it. I'm with you. That is one hell of a stage by BDS. Shaiko KD 7.0 today. 14 and 2. He's had an absolute field there. Just the BDS um, as Havard as well. You know, 7 1. Just, I mean, what a message to send. It wasn't against the best G2 side we've ever seen. You know, we've got to say that. But still, BDS just looking like if you give them an inch, they'll take them out. Someone's really going to have to convince BDS that there are most definitely seven maps in the pool because Coastline is just not going to exist to them at the major of that. It feels pretty much guaranteed. Some great games from them this stage on it. And with that, again, a flawless season. Congratulations again to BDS and for G2, a lot of work to be doing. Now, Jess, I think she's calming down. I think the annual oh, is I, I disappearing. Doubt it. I doubt it. Hang on a second. Let's just check the, uh, check the chat. Okay, she's not going off at the minute, but I guarantee you she will be in the break and on the next desk. You don't want to miss this one. We'll see you guys in a few.